I'm not trying to convince anybody that I'm a woman because I'm not. <laughs> you know? And again, it, it's all about my joy of exploring gender in a way that's, um, for me, together in one thing, not a binary thing, but just a mixture of it all. So I was turning 40, I was 39 when I first put on uh, makeup. And I was like, wow, isn't this odd to kind of have waited, you know, that long to do that. And now I'm 57. Um, I first began, uh, I think the very first time I put this was almost 20 years ago. It's been, I also did it at seven o'clock in the morning. We went to go to my dad's grave. That was, and I was really sick that day. So, you know, drag is a commitment and um, it's a lifestyle, I guess. Yeah. But what it does for me is it gives me a sense of, I am able to step into the world um, fully as this whole being that I believe myself to be, which is transcendent gender. And um, I love that. It's just like a sense of empowerment. I describe it as uh, feeling truly beautiful and uh, feeling truly powerful and feeling truly glamorous, you know. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I encounter plenty of people on a daily basis who I do not agree with, you know. And my uh, practice is about knowing that their opinions are not the truth, you know. And for forgiving myself and them for uh, espousing hate. I know my own fears. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to um, live the life that I want. And that's what they are afraid of. They're afraid that these queers are going to take away some of their rights or something like that. What I want. We're all in this world trying to create a life for ourselves that is meaningful and um, that gives us some sort of satisfaction, you know, so that we don't have to um, drudge through our days feeling put upon and, and all of that. Yeah, they were ne they were never very. I mean, even now, I walked out. I walked out of a taxi wearing. I think I was wearing these these jeans, but I was wearing my my big black coat, and someone. This is what two weeks ago. Someone driving down in the car screamed "faggot" out the window, and I was like, I, I don't think I said "fuck you." I think I said "work." Like I just like threw my fingers up and started snapping. <laughs> Yes, I'm a big old faggot. I'm very proud to be a big old faggot. Faggot. <laughs> Robust is the empress, Joey's the faggot. She sort of developed organically. On her first outing, she was a nasty, nasty, like, very blue, very, <laughs> uh, had, I'm quick anyway. Robust is quicker. I, it, it's something about the makeup and the wig. I, Robusta initially was very blue. She's become a lot softer and a lot classier. She is a little more rounded personality-wise. She's not just this smack you over the head with the porno humor immediately and the dick jokes and whatnot. When I'm in drag, nobody refers to me as Joey. I actually adamantly refuse for anyone to address me as Joey.
keeps from getting on your teeth. This is a lot of painting. <laughs> this is putting on makeup. I, I, I mean, you be whatever. You get into drag, whatever you're going to call your process. Um, I call it painting because I feel like this is like primer, right? So I like to think that candy um, keeps will in check. A lot of times when I want to be super angry or go off or whatever, I kind of I'm like, what would candy do? Candy would keep his shit together. You should be more like Candy. So, I try. But, and I have this trimmer, and it's called Essential Trimmer, and maybe someone else watching this will have it. And I mean, I didn't, I didn't perform for a while because of it. You know, I moved here and I knew I couldn't be a waiter. <laughs> I mean, there are some things I could not do, but who says I can't be a a performer that's got a little tremor. I mean, Katherine Hepburn. When I found out that Katherine Hepburn had the same uh, essential tremor, uh, it was kind of a day that changed my life. Spotlight glows Piano rolls You know your part, you've done this many times before It scares me each time Celebrate the man, the man behind the curtain. He's doing all he can, he's flying free. He has a million doubts, but this I know for certain. He gives it all he's got, he holds the key. You know, I mean, I'm a drag queen. I'm a man in a dress. Let's get real. Every queen has a moment mm. where all of a sudden it's done. For some, it's the base. For some, it's the wig. For some, it's the shoes. For me, it's the lashes. When the lashes are on and the glue is set, she's here. I have done, in, in, in Woody's lifetime, she had one big sort of brassy blonde wig that she used to use when she did a waitress or, or occasionally, but that was back in the day, 12, 15 years ago. Um, but for the most part, I stay in the red family. Now that, that can go from like ginger to a dark auburn with red highlights. One of my favorite 
music goes wrong with stories. I was doing hearts and voices in a show with the court. Mm -hmm. And there was this little queen who, this little queen, a friend of mine for 15 years. At this point, we were both declared candidates for Empress 26. Mm -hmm. She ended up dropping out of the race, but at this point we were both competing against each other, and the third was not in this event. So we decided we were going to do bosom buddies, because if you're in a campaign, it makes it look good if you're right, 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 together. Right. So I'm doing Mame, and she's doing Vera, and the music starts playing, and something's wrong. For some reason, I swear as God is my witness, Angela Lansbury's vocal track mm -hmm. was not playing. The music was playing. B. Arthur's vocal track was playing. So something about the way the stereo settings were done. Right. I'm like, to hell with this. Start the track over. And I just sang Thank it live. You. The uh, Rocky Horror Show of Country Gospel Music. <laughs> Stop. 